Um, so David Jackson, thank you so much for joining us uh, for the community call today. I appreciate you being here. Do you want to give a little maybe intro about yourself and uh, what you're going to be talking about today? Sure. Um, so hi to everyone who hasn't met me before. I'm David. I work at Weights and Biases. Um, I work on internal developer tooling here. And I've been interested in making heavier use of containerization for our builds uh, for a very long time. And that led me to Dagger. And I did, uh, we had a hackathon a few weeks ago and I worked on implementing Dagger for our repo, uh, for our mono repo as part of my hackathon thing. I did not get all the way to something that worked, but I feel like I did learn a lot and um, hopefully gave useful feedback and the team's already made really interesting changes. Um, I pivoted to trying to write sort of a utility that would help me, uh, help me make the repo daggerified eventually. And so I'll, uh, I've, I've rewritten that utility against a newer version of the SDK and it's in a public repo now and so I'll show that in a minute. Um, but I'll talk, for, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, daggerified. So uh, I'll, I'll just talk for a minute about like what our repo looks like <laughs> uh, and what, what I was trying to accomplish why I had some difficulties and how I think eventually we get there. Um, so we have a mono repo here. Uh, our main backend is written in Go. We have some Python services. We'll, we will have more in the future. Um, you know, being a company that does machine learning tools, obviously there's lots of stuff that we wanna integrate with that's Python native. Uh, we have a React front end. We have Docker containers that we build for our cloud offering. And we have a, a Docker container that we build for our on-prem offering that bundles our back end and front end together into one Docker container that our customers can deploy. So I'm assuming that lots of other people here have mono repos. Um, it takes a long time to build it. And there is a lot of like objectively redundant work done on every push. Just because we don't really have a good mechanism for knowing when not to build things. And when I first started thinking about that, I thought, okay, this is really simple, right? Uh, our mono repo is split up roughly into packages. We just have to say like, you know, if this package didn't change, don't build it. And of course, if you have a mono repo, you know, it's actually not anywhere near that easy. So what really held me up during the, uh, during the proof of concept besides some of the uh, API stuff that has changed and gotten way better with 04 was trying to figure out intra repo dependencies. So, you know, we have Go packages that depend on each other. The Docker build obviously needs to consume the Go build, needs to consume the front end build. The front end, you know, we have a couple of front end libraries. And I think. When you look at Dagger's API, it's really obvious how it solves this if the whole thing lives in Dagger, right? Dagger makes it very easy to pass around directories and files, and it makes that stuff really efficient. But we have an existing mono repo, and we have to work with these existing tools, and they were written with a file system in mind. So I'll bring up. I made this like sample mono repo 
Um, so I made this dummy mono repo that has a go back end that is a hello world service, a lib that implements the hello world, a cli that's also in Go that exposes hello world for the terminal, a front end to talk to the API. And then there's a build written in Dagger for a Docker container that bundles the API in the front end. So trying to roughly reconstruct what we have here, uh, what we have at weights and biases in our mono repo in a simplified fashion. Um, so the problem, you know, if I, I don't want to mount this whole thing into a build container. In fact, I don't want to mount it at all. I want to use with, I want to use copy because that way I can take advantage of Docker's really incredible, or sorry, build kit's really incredible caching properties. So at first I, I go in here and I, you know, with directory API, I try and build this and it fails. Um, and it fails because I have this replace directive in here and it depends on lib. So, okay, now I have to go include lib, but I also have to like back up and put API into a subdirectory so that it's a sibling of lib so that the replace directive still works, or I would have to like rewrite the replace directive. This is manageable at this scale. Um, it gets problematic really fast as the number of packages in the repo starts to grow. And what I thought was, this seems like a problem. It's like, it's not a problem that Dagger solves, but it's a problem that Dagger gives you the tools to solve. And specifically, I was looking at it and thinking, you know, we already have the information we need. The replace directive tells us what this dependency is. And in Node, I didn't create sub-dependencies in Node for this project. But, you know, if we had, like, intro repo unpinned package dependencies in Node, if we were using, like, Yarn, uh, you can do the same thing with the, like, link package type or the file package type. So I wrote this dependency crawler. And... I'm going to have a bit of a hard time describing exactly what it does because, like, there's two hard problems, right? And naming is one of them. But basically, I want to recreate <laughs> the effect of, like, if you built a really simple idiomatic Docker container, what, like, What's the first thing you do? You copy in the dependency manifest, just the dependency manifest. Then you run the dependency install. Then you copy in the rest of the project. Then you run the build. And I want that for... Uh, shit, I thought I had the, the diagram. In, oh, I do. Um, I want it, I, I want to do that for this. So if you change lib, API should need to reinstall its dependencies and rebuild. Cli should need to reinstall its dependencies and rebuild. Docker container needs to rebuild. Front end should stay exactly the same. Um, if you change Cli and you rebuild the Docker container, like basically nothing should happen. Um, if you change API's source, but not its dependencies, um, Lib doesn't actually have a build step right now, but at least the dependency install step will be skipped here in front end will build. You change front end and nothing happens with Lib and API. Uh, so this turns out to be pretty easy to do with Dagger. 
So I made this function that's like a generic, we're gonna build a Go project thing. You pass in a Dagger client, you pass in the packages subdirectory and the OS and the architecture that you want. And it instantiates my dependency scanner. And then it tells the dependency scanner to get, like, this is the thing I don't really have a good word for, but it's basically it's the depths stage or it's the pre-depths stage. So what this produces is a directory that contains, uh, you know, if, where we call this with, uh, yeah, where we call this with API, the get subder with dependencies will get you a directory that has the structure of the mono repo, but it only contains projects, API, go mod and go sum, and lib and everything inside of it. And then because I figured there's always going to be some out of band dependencies, I also have a fallback mechanism here. If you write a depends on file, you can just say outright that this directory depends on some other file. So I couldn't come up with a good way to make this stray files directory like actually part of the build in time. But this, this would like, Changing this would force the entire build to change. So let me just build it. And this should all be in cache. Um, you'll see there's a few things that are where the work is actually done, but they're just like resolving image names and copying files into build kit. All the substantive work is cached and it leaves me with this. Image loaded in. And I'll run the image. And we've got our app. So now let's try making a change to the library. So we'll change the greeting from hello to hey. And I'm going to rerun this build. And much too much of this is cached, which probably means that I built it with hay before. So um, here, I'll, I'll change it again. I know I haven't done this. Hold up. Sorry? Oh, hold up. Oh, nothing. You could replace for hola or something. Um, OK, so this time you're getting the idea. We're doing a Go mod download because this has changed. So the dependency installation step for API is rerunning. And you can also see that the Go build reruns. One thing that does not rerun, however, is the yarn build step that builds the React app. And then Ooh, have I made it, have I made it difficult to unmaximize this? I don't know how I did that. Oh, yeah. um, so let's kind of do the same thing again. I'll make a trivial change to the front end, and I will run the build again. And this time you can see that 
everything else stayed the same, but the yarn build reran. And then just to close the loop on that, I'll run the container one more time and we've made our changes. So, um, <laughs> oh, I, I just saw Solomon's message. Yeah, too fast. Um, so yeah, to me, this is really compelling. I think that there's an ideal world where everything in the repo is dagger and it's even more efficient than this and you don't really have to think about it. But that requires getting really deep integration with the tooling. Um, like, I don't know if anybody here has used Bazel, um, but like if you try to set up a Go build in Bazel, you have to use, um, I, I think it's, I think they call it Gazelle. And Gazelle like crawls your dependency tree. Actually, it, so it's terrible, like, it, cause it's hard to make it work, <clears throat> but it does get you like really fine grained caching. And I could imagine a future where something like Gazelle exists for Go and maybe really huge Go projects can build lightning fast uh, without even having to persist a cache directory. That's the other cool thing about this is you don't need a mounted cache directory um, because this relies on normal build kit layer caching you can actually use previous builds in your registry as cache. And I have experience doing this in our builds at Weights and Biases right now. Um, it is strictly speaking worse than having a local cache, but in most cases it is more than good enough and it saves a ton of work. So I could imagine a future where that kind of mechanism is used in combination with something like Gazelle for Dagger, to power like really fine grained things and everything's happening within Dagger and you're really passing, you know, artifacts between builds, but nobody with a big repo is going to start there. Um, you have tooling that you made work with a file system. And I think that people with big repos are the people who are going to be most interested in Dagger, like, because it's, it helps you tame the chaos, right? And it helps you make those builds fast. And so I see this as kind of a transitional tool. It also implements parsing for package JSON files, but it'd be very, very easy to extend it to parsing like Python requirements files and for other languages that I don't know. So that's my demo.